Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present Ethnil in this Clarion Cafe. Uh, a little bit about myself, my background, I am a linguist and computational linguist and I have been working in this area for almost 40 years. I've been head of the Danish Language Council for 13 years and in this capacity I was one of the initiators of the Danish Clarion Initiative and uh, recently I've been head of the Danish Language Technology Committee that designed the present Danish strategy for language technology. So, but today I'm speaking in my capacity as vice president of FMIL. Um, the outline of my short presentation will just be something about FMIL, about FMIL's projects and FMIL institutions and clearance. We are currently in the happy situation that more and more decision makers acknowledge that language resources and linguistic research are becoming more and more important. And the initiation of the ELE project is a clear sign of this development, but it is also a result of a continuous effort to create awareness among the, about the importance of language and language understanding in our societies. And EFNIL and its institutions have been very actively supporting these endeavors for many years. So uh, the European Federation uh, consists of 29 countries and 40 member organization that you can see here. Recently, uh, Georgia and the Ukraine joined. And uh, well, we are a European um, organization starting in the EU, but also uh, continuously having non-EU members joining. And actually, we have um, had contact with other institutions of similar kind, even in Korea, but we are basically in, in the EU. Um, as you can see here, the, um, the members are either states institutions for language, they may be language research institution, they are public bodies promoting language and culture, state institution for language learning and um, other types of state institutions. Um, typically, and a state institution and an academic institution would share a membership. That's why there are 40 institutions representing 23 uh, languages or countries. But it all depends on the political and academic and linguistic organization of a given country. For instance, Belgium has three representing institutions, one for the Wallonian area and two for Dutch. And the two Dutch institutions also represent uh, Dutch in the Netherlands. So there are many different um, types of institutions. And the tasks of the different institutions differ depending on the political and academic setting. And some are working on language standardization, information about languages, plain language. Um, some are working with the promotion of language and cultural aspects, and some are mainly research institutions. The activities of EFMIL are um, made in, usually made in projects. Uh, one project is the uh, language legislation for Europe that describes different uh, types of language legislation in the different countries. So you can go in and read about each country and the way they are organized. There is the European Language Monitor, and I'll say a little bit more about that. So where the language legislation project contains like text about each country, the language monitor every four years collects data about the legislation and can demonstrate how legislation for language regimes are changing. Uh, and then we have ELLIPS, which is a recent project about European languages and their intelligibility in the public space. It's mainly about how do public institutions communicate with citizens and how do they include, um, create a language that includes everyone and is understandable for everyone. This involves, for instance, also things like terminology. Um, FNIL makes uh, and arranges conferences and uh, publications and tries to analyze the situation in, uh, on different linguistic areas. They give consultation services on language policy for political decision makers. And they try to propagate the cultural and practical benefits for European linguistic diversity and plurilingualism through different actions and publications. And uh, one of these actions, for instance, is the uh, EFNIL Master's Thesis Award, which is an award for master students uh, for thesis on language and language policies. Um, and if you want to look more at EFNIL, then there is the website here. It's rather easy, efnil.org. 
um, and there you can read more about the different activities. But I'll dive into some of them right now. So the European Language Monitor is a scientific review of the language situation in the countries. And we do this every four years. So all the institutions contribute to the information. So it's comparable all the time. It's the same questions that are being asked. And uh, it is also tried, we try to make it comparable across countries as much as this is possible. Uh, and we, and most of all, we really try to provide exact reference to the legislation so that you can go in and read the different paragraphs in the legislation that, that show how language policies are organized. And uh, this, of course, gives a good background about the status of the languages of Europe. So the questions that are asked are, for instance, the country situation, the legal situation, education, tertiary education, media papers, business and dissemination of languages and language organization. And last, last uh, language technology, which were actually questions that were asked, that were added uh, on, um, on, yeah, by uh, actually what was Georg, I think, who, who asked us to include a couple of questions on language technology, which was quite useful also for the uh, further work that we are doing. Here you can see how it is visualized. You can go in here, you can see a question that is um, answered by Bulgaria and Iceland. And of course, the other countries have answered it too. Uh, about the constitution, is there a statement about the, the national language or the, a language, um, official language in the constitution? And you can see the Bulgarian answer in the comment and a link to the actual um, constitution. You can see a quote from the article. And you can see that for Icelandic, it is a different situation, but you still get links and information. So it's quite detailed uh, and very useful for, for us in our own work, but also for others. Uh, and you can see then, if you want to compare with other countries, where your country is on this spe specific question um, like that. Um, this is one of the questions we ask, for instance, is there an official plan or strategy you can see how this looks like, or you can look at what is, is there a funding program for language technology in your country? And you can see quite a lot of countries do have a funding program, but there are still countries who don't. So, so these are the questions in the European Language Monitor. Um, you must keep in mind, this is probably one of the areas that is quickly changing the data here, was collected in 2017, and it will be updated this year. So I believe things will have changed a lot since uh, for this one. ELLIPS is uh, another project about plain language. So it looks at plain language policies and actions, easy to read language, terminology policies, um, different use of language with regard to gender and cultural and sexual diversity, um, training of information providers and in public institution and also collaboration uh, on these areas. And uh, the project uses the same software and strategy as the monitor, but it goes in and it also goes into depth with link with different links and and uh, links to strategies and so on. This is one of the questions that you can see where we have asked what materials, instructions, services and tools are available available uh, in order to help public administrations comply with principles of plain language. And you can see for instance, in the case of tools, there are still lots of things to be done. There are not many countries that are having good tools to help, you know, people write in a, in a clear style or to, uh, to have, for instance, plain language corpora that could help to train tools to, to help public servants. Ethnic conferences, um, you can just see the titles here. I won't go through them, but there is an annual conference and uh, it has a specific topic every year. And the publications are all on, available online, so you can dive into some of the themes and get an overview of the state of the art in Europe for this topic. Um, language resources and language technology was a topic 10 years ago and is also a topic this year where we will reflect on the role of national language institutions in the digital age. And we count on that there will be presentations from both Clara, Clara, uh, Clarin and Ely. 
shortly about the Master's Thesis Award. Um, it's a competition, as I said, and uh, the students actually get some money and an invitation to present their thesis and so on. And of course, it's one of our uh, efforts to try to, to make more students interested in this area, the field of language research. Efnil is uh, a member of, um, of ELE, as Georg already mentioned, and also EFNI member institutions are clearance centers, some of them at least. Some of them are collecting their own resources or participate in national resource building projects. So um, when I was asked to give this presentation, I send out a short questionnaire about Clarin to our members, just to get an impression of how much our members are involved with Clarin. And uh, I got an answers back from 20 institutions representing 17 countries. So that's about 60%. And this is the result. So my first question was about the relationship to Clarin. And you can see from the diagram, the picture is quite diverse. Half of the respondents have a more or less strong relation to Clarin. 25% are Clarin members, five, that's five respondents. 25% are even Clarin centers. On the other hand, there is also 25% that states they never use Clarin. And uh, some of them say they use it, but or they don't use it themselves, but they know that some of their colleagues are using it. So there is still some institutions within EFNIL at least who are not so much uh, aware of clearing and not, not so active in, in that area. Uh, I also asked them how they are using the clearing infrastructure. Some of them saying we are actively building and involving, involved in building the structure. Some of them say they are just following the recommendations. Some of them are doing everything, depositing resources, looking at the available corpora and using the tools. Some of them use it for cooperation. And there are also some of our members who are interested in becoming members, but they think that the fees are too high and that it is not so, uh, they don't get support from the institution to join Clarin. We also asked our members what they expect from Clarin in the future. And uh, here I could see it was more tools. They would really like more tools, for instance, for plain language things, uh, discussions, it could be interesting. Uh, more processed resources, more training possibilities, and uh, quite a number uh, were, were asking for more legal workshops. You know, the, the ideas of copyright and the problems with getting the text and, and, and resources uh, available is, is still a great problem everywhere. So I think many of them would like to have some more training in that field. Um, of course, lower fees for small institutions could be a good possibility to involve even more people. And, uh, and then, of course, something that comes up very often is this question of differentiation between Clarin and other infrastructure projects. So people would like to have some kind of guide. Well, if I have this project pro problem, where should I go? Which infrastructure should I use? That's, of course, um, always um, a discussion. Finally, I also asked um, our members how satisfied they were with Clarin, those of them who were using it. And uh, as you can see, this looks quite good. Uh, those who use the platform are very happy with it. So I believe there's a good basis for increasing our cooperation and perhaps to get more FNIL members involved in Clarin. And um, I think uh, the, this opportunity to present Clarin in this context is a great starting point and I would like to express my gratitude to the hosts for inviting me to this event.